Hello and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be looking at what's in this box, the Canon R5. Let's get right to it. Also today, what I'm going to be doing, not only just looking at this nice new camera, I'm going to be comparing it hand to hand with my Canon 5D4. I have been shooting that camera for at least four and a half years now. Basically, I got it right when it was released. And here we go with its replacement and looking forward to seeing how this is going to change a little bit just by experience of photography. I don't think it's going to change my photography itself, but I do think it will change my experience at least just a little bit. I also bought this little charger. It's the Mini Duo Charger. I wanted this because this will take a USB cord and allow me to charge two batteries, which is going to be great. It'll probably take forever, but that's all right. I need something that I can charge while on the road and not having my regular charger available to, to, to get these batteries powered up. All right, the R5 with 24105F4. So we've got a few of the warranty type stuffs, the very thick. Now that is incredible. The very thick book. Now it also has Spanish and French languages in that same book. All right. I think I've seen this kind of thing somewhere. This is kind of cool. Basically, that is the exact same charger that came with my 5D4. Nice compact charger. I like those that just have the plug swinging out where I don't have to worry about this extra cord thing to run to the wall. Just plug straight into the wall. I really like that. All right, so I have a plug or a cord here, I should say. And it has some kind of cord controller. I like that. So it doesn't just, when it's plugged into the camera, it can't just, you know, get yanked out or whatever. So a little bit of a support item for that. And it's just a standard USB-C cable. The battery, good. I've got plenty of these because of my 5D4. They're the same format of battery. All right. Doing away with styrofoam, it seems. We have this recyclable plastic insert. little pouch for the lens. Pretty much won't be using that at all because, well, I just stick it in my bag, but always nice to have a little pouch when you need it. Camera strap, which I pretty much never use. The lens hood. Always like to have my lens hoods available when I need it. I don't use them very often, but when you need it, you need it. Um, mostly I'm going to be using this for those, just those really bright sunshiny days that you want to reflect a little bit of light away. Uh, otherwise in a wide angle lens, and as you can see, even when I go to telephoto, this is going to be useless. So when I, it would be more useful when I'm wide angle and oftentimes I just use my hand to, to shade the, the sun too. So many times I don't use them, but sometimes you just want the little extra protection that it can offer. All right, another layer of molded insert. All right, let's take a look at this lens first. Mmm, <clears throat> there we go. 24-105. That is definitely a substantial lens. It has a little locking switch there. I can't zoom. I unlock it and then I can zoom. Don't know why I'd ever leave that locked, but anyway. Standard idea, the autofocus button, the stabilizer on or off switch. We have that extra ring there. We have the zoom there. And then this, oh, this sorry, this is the focus ring. And then this is going to be that other click dial ring. That'll be something I have to get used to. 
shooting with the R lenses. All right, and then the body itself. And there we have it. All right. Feels already a little bit lighter than my 5D4. Of course, we can maybe put the specs up here on the on the screen for you, but that's not really the biggest thing. I do want to just compare it just so I can compare it. But there's so many other differences that are going to be really meaningful with this upgrade in camera. One thing is this flippy screen. All right, just that's going to be really sweet. Love the idea of the flippy screen. All right, ships with a completely dead battery. So I'm going to grab one of my other ones here and see if this has any juice in it. Aha, we have something. So of course, like you would expect, just setting the date and time and all of the good stuff. So I'll spend a few seconds doing that. All right, so I've done the initial setup with a date and time. I synchronized it to my GPS watch because this doesn't have a built-in GPS. When I'm out hiking, I'm going to be using my GPS watch. So as long as these are synchronized, of course, if I switch time zones or whatever, I have to you know, be cognizant of that. But I should be able to then use Lightroom to easily translate that, that tracking that the watch gives me right onto these images and it puts all that GPS data right in the images. All right, so let's grab the other camera out and let's just do a quick little comparison between the two. I don't know, there's just something about a new camera that's just really fun. I try and not get all, you know, crazy with new gear and such like that, but let's face it, it's a little bit fun, right? am I not right? So when I look at these two cameras, you know, certainly the first thing is I do have an L bracket for my 5D4 and I'm realizing I need to find one for this camera now and make sure I can get one here shortly because I got a lot of shooting coming up. As I just think about these two different, the two different bodies and the two different weights, actually these are almost the same weight. And I think it's because, and I kind of figured this was going to be the case, it's because this lens is a bit heavier than this lens. I have normally shot with the 2470, and this is the F4 model. And then this, of course, is 24105 F4 model. But since this is the RF mount, we have a shorter flange distance. That basically means there's going to be a little more glass in here. It is a heavier lens compared to this other lens. So let me go ahead and take off the lenses themselves. And then I'll also put up the details here for you on screen so you can see the exact weight differences between these two lenses. Of course, it's not fair to compare. This only goes to 70 millimeters. Yeah, this one feels slightly lighter. And then this one feels slightly heavier. So what I figured I'd do actually, I'm going to revisit this idea between the weight between the lenses. And I went and borrowed my wife's kitchen scale. And let's just weigh everything out as it is. Now this is going to be without the rear cap. And I'm measuring in grams. 716 grams for the 24-105 RF mount lens. So that was 716 versus 624. So I was right. This is a little bit lighter. Just shy of 100 grams lighter. But when we take a look at the overall camera body, everything in it, you know, collectively, there's no card in here, but I do have a battery in here. So I have a battery and a battery, but no card in either one. 1656 grams for the Canon 5D4. In 1438. So that is just barely not much weight savings. So when you're looking to buy and switch over to mirrorless, as you can see, the idea of the weight savings, it just really isn't there. Certainly I could have gone with or waited for or whatever the case is. I could have gone with a 24 to 70 on this lens 
Um, but I wanted the extra reach, so I'm glad that I went with that lens. But when you have just a 200 gram difference, now let's see how much this L bracket weighs. So the L bracket is 151 grams. So then that takes this down to 1502 for the 5D Mark IV. So that's a very similar weight between these two cameras as I normally shoot them. With this lens, with that lens, again, I get a little more reach out of this lens. That's certainly a good thing. I appreciate that. But just to reiterate, that whole idea, that whole notion of saving weight, you're going to mirrorless to save weight, it's pretty obvious. It's not a thing anymore these days. All right, now we're going to take a look at just a little bit of the ergonomics between the two cameras. So certainly this camera is a bit taller, the 5D4, a bit taller. So it has the pentaprism, so it's a lot bulkier up there. The grip is definitely a little bit smaller on this camera. And then we've got a bunch more knobs up here, and then we can see we have these different panels up top, standard LCD on this side, and this more compact LCD over here on that one. I've got a video recording button right there, which is kind of sweet. I don't have to switch this over to the video mode on the back here, so I kind of like that. Certainly this has the live view button. I can start and stop the live view button. It's a DSLR, so that's a thing. No longer a thing on this camera. I also have the same little joystick item here. It's more in the natural position for the thumb, I think. So I, I do like that. This will probably take a little bit of getting used to, and that is this mode button right here. I'm certainly used to this ring selector here where I push down this little button and I spin this little thing. And so that selects which mode. And of course, I'm usually in manual, but with this, I, I have to hit this button and then I rotate this dial and I can select which one. And now that's in manual. Oop, the battery is dying. So yeah, that'll be an interesting thing to get used to on that minor, but still uh, an interesting thing to get used to. So on this side of the camera, we have the exact same types of controls. They're just in slightly different orientations. So they put the, the synchronization, the PC sync down here instead of up on top. On this camera, it's up on top. And then the HDMI on the R5 is the nice micro HDMI. I really like that because that's what I use with the Sony that I'm recording this on right now. And when I use that as my webcam, I just take the HDMI feed and it'll be great. I could swap this in as my webcam, although it's a little bit heavy for the mount I have on the wall. The Sony a6400 works perfectly for that. Otherwise, as I'm studying the back of the camera, there's... I mean, I, I still have all the same, mostly all the same buttons, but, you know, they're just in slightly different locations. This isn't going to be hard to transfer over. One button I don't have on the R5 is this one way at the top, the little paintbrush looking button. And I got to tell you, I don't think I've ever used that button. So not even sure I could tell you what it's for. Well, I did also order the adapter to give me access to my EF lenses because I do have a 16 to 35 f4 that I want to be able to shoot on this camera. And then I've got the 70 to 300 millimeter that I want to be able to shoot on this camera and then a 100 to 400 that I want to be able to put on this camera. So that adapter is coming later. It was back ordered, so it had to be shipped later. But when it comes to versatility and as far as the workhorse lens, I know this 24-105 is definitely going to be my, my go-to lens for most everything. That's within the range of most everything I shoot. And the thing that's nice about going beyond that 70 millimeters, we're going to have, I'm going to be able to have just a little bit more reach there. And then I have some overlap between that 70 to 300 and this lens, this 2470, I will actually have overlap, which I'm very much looking forward to. I also ordered some extension tubes. So when it comes to doing some macro work, on this lens, I was able to use this, what I call pseudo macro. So it's got this little switch here, and then I can switch it to where it says macro. It's not a true macro, but it does get me a little bit more closely focused than not using it. And so that's a nice function to have. And then when you put extension tubes there, you just get even closer and closer to it. But on this one, that doesn't have that function. So I'll have to do just straight extension tubes to add a more of a macro effect to this. Now they are coming out, or they have already released shortly anyway, 
that 100 F28 macro, that definitely is something I'm interested in. That would be, I think, pretty amazing. That looks to be a really sweet lens for the RF macro mount lens. All right, let's take a look at the last thing I got, and that is this little charger. Let's just see what it's about, shall we? So it has the little USB power adapter, its own little cable, and then of course, the item to where we're going to just plug in the batteries and get to charging. Now these batteries are 7.2 volts and a USB is only five volts. So it has to do some kind of conversion there. And here's, here's the deal. It wants you to input two amps, but the output, so the power it's feeding the battery is gonna be 8.4 volts at 0.6 amps. So it's really decreasing the amps in favor of higher voltage. So that just means it's gonna take forever to charge these batteries. But for the convenience of USB charging, I think I'm gonna be okay with that. I think we'll do just fine. Okay, that's it for today. I have one last thing to buy. That is an L bracket for the R5. I guess I'm gonna go and do that right now because that's quite frankly something I just plum forgot to do. But there we have it, a quick look at the R5, what it's about, how it compares to the 5D Mark IV in just basic size, basic ergonomics, and a brief preview on that. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you along with all the different things that we do here on the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as you do that, we're going to be coming out with more videos on just a variety of topics, whether it's things on the road that I'm doing this summer, and going into the fall, I'm going to be doing a lot of backpacking and a lot of other good stuff. Uh, camping, backpacking, so much stuff. I'm going to really work this camera out. It's going to be just wonderful to get out there in the wilderness and see uh, how this camera does with all that. All right. Thanks again. Until next time, happy shooting.